You make me wanna live for your pussy. You make me wanna live for your cunty. You make me wanna live for your pussy. Don't let me flatline on your EKG. You make me wanna live for your pussy. You make me wanna live for your cunty. You make me wanna live for your pussy. Don't let me flatline on your EKG. Who is that bitch? Now I saw that bitch in the bed. I see. Do you wanna see? Do you wanna try me? I see you over there now, picking your shit. Oh hell no. Who is that bitch? Now I'm not gonna be pressed or scared. Keep me in the back now if you dare. If you wanna come now, come for me. I wanna see you eat me. Now you make me wanna live for your pussy. You make me wanna live for your cunty. You make me wanna live for your pussy. Don't let me fat line on your EKG. You make me wanna live for your pussy. You make me wanna live for your cunty. You make me wanna live for your pussy. Don't let me fat line on your EKG. Ooh, ooh. Who is that? Who to the who to the who is that? Who 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 is that? Who's that bitch? interview with Mr. London Lewis. Fabulously. He's here. He's going to be talking about a few questions about his career and uh, his personal life. Are we ready to interview this gentleman here? Oh yes. I'm definitely right. ready. So let's get into business, mister. Let's talk about you first. Give me a little explanation of what inspired you to become part of the ball scene. What inspired you? What really brought you to this world? Um... Well, first was a while back, my best friend, Pinky, um, he was a part of the ballroom scene back then, and he was trying to introduce him to Springfield, Massachusetts, because there, no, there was no ballroom scene here. So that was one thing that was kind of like intriguing to me. Like I wanted to bring something new and fresh, because, you know, um, back in the day, we used to, we used to do drag shows. Nobody knew about that about me. <laughs> well, I didn't really do it, but I supported friends that did it. And um, now I wanted to bring what I saw from Vogue Evolution, like Prince Milan, Leomi, uh, Miserahi at the time, um, Deshaun, all of them, they brought something new to the world. So I wanted to bring it to Springfield so we can expand it to keep the life of the gay community to keep going and moving on in Springfield, Massachusetts. Awesome. <laughs> How do you feel about collaborating with uh, other people? Let's say with other states. I, I I love collaborating because you get to learn something new every time you work with somebody different. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, it's kind of refreshing to know what somebody else came from, or you go to their hometown and mm -hmm. you learn and you take and you bring it back home and teach others. Or you know, it's all about sharing, I guess. And it's just an experience to me. I love it. I recently find out that you won one thousand dollars in in one of the big ball scenes. It's mm -hmm. like, what? How, how that accomplishment made you feel like you know? There's a lot of competition out there, and I see a lot of fabulous people, you know, bringing out the, the, the game of it. Right, and it's like, right. oh my god, it's so awesome. Tell me, how do you feel to achieve such a goal? See, um, right now I still feel like I need more, you know? Not as in the money-wise, but just as in goal-wise, because um, so many people take our world, well, Massachusetts is so small. It's all about New York, it's all about Philly, it's all about Atlanta. I'm really into it. I want, it felt good to win it, though. At the time, it felt we were, um, refreshing and, you know, but as of, I don't want to stop from like it. I want to keep going and seeing what other doors and opportunities and different prizes can open. 
It's like a, I feel you. I know, it's a I fantasy. It is it, a it, fantasy. It, it's like a because fantasy. I see you when when I see you performing. Mm. I see this whole fantasy. I see an outfit. Right. I see the whole dressing gestures that you that you put into it. Right. And especially the dance move after. It's like, how can you how can you deal with such so much curviness and all your body <laughs> your body your body all that body the joints and stuff like that. How can you do? Um, Listen, I think I will break my leg. Hey. I, I like to go eat a lot, you know. <laughs> I like to eat and um, just to work out. Um, my special, my favorite moments is to eat at night, work out in the morning time. I assume like five o'clock in the morning, start stretching, and um, stretching allows me to do all those moves on the floor to back back then. I even want to break. So it's a up. passion. So it's more than a passion. Yeah, this drive. Is, this is a drive. This is what drives you to where you want to be in your life. This is your creativity. This is how you show the world. My creativity, my, awesome. my, my dream. And I think also, what also let me put so much energy into the ballroom scene is because like when I didn't do ballroom, it was kind of depressing a little bit because like, I went to dance school, we performed, you know, for Springfield, we, but it was always just in Springfield. It was never traveling out. Ballroom has a, just go back to the other question. Like it allows me to travel and to grow up and see there's different cultures, the different things out there. It's more than just here. Basically. I got one big question for you, London. I see in the world that we're living in um, a lot of shadiness. You see how everybody throws shade. Yeah, you know, the house is. They're throwing shade at each other. They're not collaborating with each other. What do you think of, of a such situation that is now happening in the LGBT community? Like, what would you, what would you like to see in difference to the shade that has been going on? Um, with the shade, I like to see. Shade is fun when it's in ballroom on the yeah. floor. Like, it's fun just to like. It makes you want to like, okay, I'm gonna get her back next, you know, the next time we see each other. But as of outside of ballroom, I want to see that shade turn into a positive, like posi uh, a positive, how, positive, so on, so you on. know, evolution. Because I, I, I like the when you get shade on the floor, it allows you to grow to make sure you're always thinking of something new. Mm -hmm. And I think people that does shade outside of ballroom should do it because it kind of pushes you in your lifestyle, like. Okay, even if you have some bad blood, you can be like, okay, oh, she got a new car. Well, I'm gonna get a new car too. Yes. So let's let me work on work and go to work and get all this money and you know stack it up that way. But also, but I would really love it to disappear as well, like the shade. Yeah, because some people really can get swallowed up by it and they can pressurize. What's whole the world. concept of your video? Of um, because I just saw I you know I work with you of course, mm -hmm. but I would have never thought that you would have. Uh, tell your fans to come and battle you on the dance floor bring the shade to the dance floor right you know it's like mostly everybody wants to bring the shade and other different type of forms and exactly. levels and now you're trying to bring this message out to this community be like okay stop the shade if you want to throw shade meet me on the dance floor right that's your new motto right yeah that's what it's, it's, it's no more arguing it's no more going back and forth. I, I don't, I've never been the type of person to ever, you know, go back and forth for somebody and, and say so much nasty words. Because you know what? To me, is actions speak louder than words. And I, I mean, if they have a problem, there's always an opportunity in the back. I was waiting for them at the door. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a bad blood line oh, yes. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, let me ask you one, a uh, few more questions. I we we had covered mostly all the percussion things that that you remember mostly all of them. <laughs> the world wants to know if you're dating. The world wants to know uh, if if you're collaborating with people who is part of your life. Mm. They want to know a little bit about you because they you know they see you performing. They see this great talent that you carry. So they want to know a little bit about your personality. Are you dating someone? Um, at the moment, I am not. Um, I recently got out of a big relationship. Okay. Um, I'm trying to keep it. Trying to go to what? To what? So, so you don't want no relationship. What? What's your relationship? Working? Ball yeah. dancing? That's yeah. your job. That's um, your motivation. Me and Benjamin Franklin have a good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I love it. So, I love you know. So that's just the, your number one priority. Probably. Yes, as of right now. Um, but I feel like in the future, maybe when things settle down and there's enough time for me and a, per a person to settle with, I think it will come. I have one question that I always ask all my um, my guests mm -hmm. that I interview them and give them a special interview. Okay. I always ask them about HIV, mm -hmm. um, Bovian. Okay. Um, because this is this is the most important crisis that is going on right now in, in our community. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever been involved in any of that activism stuff? Actually, I was just I'm talking to my best friends last night, and we were talking about it. Um, I have ran into a couple of scenarios like that, and I I really don't see a difference in a person when you know th that kind of situation happens because everybody's still human, like you know. I feel like if we would be that way towards a person that is positive, you know, you might as well be like that way towards me for being gay, you know what I mean? It's, I feel like we're all equal, we all are here to help each other out, we always, humans are here to discover. So, like... So you're saying no matter HIV, negative or positive, you give them the love they need. Exactly. Because, okay. it, because everybody bleeds the same way, no matter if you have a title behind it, no matter of age, we all have the same system. We all eat this world the same way. Awesome. So. What about bullying? Uh, bullying. What are you feeling about bullying? Have you ever been bullied? Um, back in almost elementary school. Um, but it wasn't for long because my mom told me to get him back. So <laughs> and when it came to um, April Fool's Day, I had made some cookies with some um, soap in it, and I gave it to the bully. And he kind of got sick in the stomach and everything. They kind of find out it was me. And I still have this big, big teddy bear that's like almost, almost as tall as me. <laughs> and but um, he punched me in my lip, and I bleed it all over my bottom of my teddy bear foot. Um, foot. And I went home. I showed my mom. She's like, "Well, when you go back, you give him what it, what it's like to be bullied." So I had to put myself in a position of being a bully. And at the same time, I learned how it feels to be a bully because sometimes it doesn't feel good to bully somebody but you know that's your only way of being in charge of a situation and so but i don't think bullying should ever be around it's it can drive a person to be depressed to even go further to take their own life and so it's just like yeah i'm anti-bullying what message would like londa escada bring to the world? What message would you like to bring to this community that now is getting involved in HIV, bullying, ball scenes, drag shows? Everybody has a creativity, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we all have the creativity and we're all dealing with all these issues. Right. What's your message? Because now you are a role model. Now you're a mentor to all these young adults that are looking at you. Um, what I would say is whatever you do in life, make sure it's a balance. Um, the reason why I said this is a balance because every too much too much wood can smother a fire, too much air can take blow out a fire out, but together they can build a beautiful flame. So it's just like whatever you do in life, just make sure you do it, but make sure there's always a balance to it. And also when it comes to anything else, when you sleep, another person needs. Yeah. So I like those words. He said, well, somebody sleeps, somebody else is eating. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We have to keep sharing the love. I said this in my interview before and on Two Sides of the Game. Show love through love. And this is what we're doing in here. SBB, that's what it does. Love through love. Thank you, London, for coming no and having this great interview with me. The Thank world you. will see more about you. Say hi to your fans. Hey, everybody. Love you guys. And uh, I call them my family. <laughs> <laughs>